Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Does Antonio Conte have to replace Solskjaer at Manchester United? Agbonyahal has come out and said that Manchester United should sack Solskjaer and appoint Antonio Conte. Now, the other week, it said Antonio Conte would accept the Man United job if Solskjaer was to be sacked. Antonio Conte wants a winning project, so he rejected Arsenal and he rejected Tottenham. Conte has got a good pedigree behind him, won a lot of silverware in his home nation. He's also managed in the Premier League before. When he was in his first season at Chelsea, he won the Premier League. Conte is available because he left Inter Milan at the end of last season. You know, some United fans reckon if Conte came in, you know, he'd do a good job and it suit the strappings of the club. I think there's some United fans that want Zidane in. Now, is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in danger of losing the fans? There's Man United fans that are frustrated with Solskjaer's playing style and his selections. Obviously, there is Man United fans that are demanding Oli out. We've lost three of our last four games. We lost to Aston Villa at the weekend, 1-0. We lost to West Ham last week in the Carabao Cup. And we lost to Young Boys in the Champions League. We've had two home losses in a row and we've failed to score. Solskjaer has to win a trophy this season to basically save his job. Solskjaer's not yet won a trophy as Manchester United manager. We haven't won a trophy since 2017. That's nowhere near good enough to our standards. The other week, Solskjaer did mention that we must leave a legacy of silverware. This season is Solskjaer's third full season as Man United manager. And I did mention that this season is massive for him because he's got big expectations to exceed. We know Solskjaer's ambition for this season and that's to win the Premier League. We're not going to win the Premier League under Solskjaer. Uh, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013. That's eight years ago now. We should be winning the league this season because we've got a title winning squad. So there's no excuses. Quite a few weeks ago, Solskjaer told his Man United squad that it's better than the 1999 treble winning team that Solskjaer was part of. Like I said to you yesterday, Solskjaer's job is safer than ever. 
despite us losing three of our last four games. Uh, our board have got a lot of trust in Solskjaer. Obviously, in the summer transfer window, Solskjaer got very good backing. Obviously, John Murtaugh backed him. John Murtaugh is our director of football and we made the right decision getting a director of football in because I did mention it's one of the structural changes we needed at the club. Uh, Darren Fletcher also backed Solskjaer. And we made the right decision recommending Darren Fletcher back in. Darren Fletcher knows the club through thick and thin. He enjoyed two decades as a player for Man United. And surprisingly, our owners, the Glazers, back Solskjaer. But only because they've been persuaded to. Towards the end of last season, the Glazers were planning to scrap the Champions League for that European Super League. So... Reflecting on that, Man United fans started protesting against the Glazers at the Carrington training ground, then protested against them outside Old Trafford. But towards the end of last season, Solskjaer did reveal that the Glazers apologised. Uh, the Glazers have put Man United in so much debt. Uh, they've been with us since 2005, so the Glazers have been at Man United for a good 16 years or so. They bought the club for £500 million back in 2005. And Ed Woodward has said several times before that he'd back Solskjaer. So Woodward stood by him and Woodward assured that Solskjaer's job was safe, even when we was enjoying them bad periods under Oli, where Oli was extremely close to getting sacked. Obviously, we know Woodward's leaving Man United. It got announced he was leaving back in April when that European Super League came into the equation. Uh, Woodward has had a 16-year association with the club. Uh, Solskjaer signed a new contract with the club until 2024 with an option of a further year. Um, he signed the contract in the summer. And like I mentioned, we made a mistake giving him that new contract because I can assure he won't see it out. Solskjaer hasn't got a proven pedigree as a manager. That is a concern. No, he hasn't won anything with us yet as Man United manager. Uh, before he was with us, he was at Mould. He won a few Norwegian titles with them. But they're not a big club. He enjoyed two spells at Mould. And before Mould, he was at Cardiff. And his record at Cardiff was terrible. The reason he got sacked from Cardiff is because he ended up getting them relegated. Only enjoyed a short tenure at Cardiff. And before then, Oli managed the Man United reserve team for a couple of years. So he watched some of the team grow and develop. And like I've said to you, my other concern about Solskjaer is his decision making. Because analysing the vast majority of the games he's managed at Man United so far, he's been tactically naive. I heavily criticised Solskjaer the other week in our 2-1 loss to Young Boys because Oli was accountable for that loss because the substitutions were wrong and, you know, the tactics were wrong. You know, there's also things I've got to credit Solskjaer for as well. You know, there's not all negativity regarding him. I've got to turn around and say Solskjaer has done a pretty good job to say the current squad he was left with when he got appointed in as Man United manager. I, am, I didn't expect Solskjaer to do as well as he has done, so in that aspect, I am shocked. Really am shocked. Because Solskjaer knew when he'd taken over at Man United it was going to be a massive job, and he knew he had a lot to do when he got appointed in. Solskjaer has got a lot of trustworthy in his young players. I like the way he develops the youth. Uh, Solskjaer has more or less given everybody their chances to express themselves, including the young players. He did say 
he'd do that, you know, when he got appointed in as Man United manager. Uh, Solskjaer has made good signings as Manchester United manager. Uh, so far, Solskjaer has signed 14 players and we've spent like £441 million under the Solskjaer era. In the summer of 2019, Oli recommended Daniel James and wan Bissaka and Harry Maguire in. In January 2020, Oli recommended Bruno Fernandes in and Odi Nagala win on loan. Um, in the summer of 2020, Oli recommended Edison Cavani in, Alex Tellez, Donny van der Beek and Mad Diallo and Facundo Palistri. And in this year's summer transfer window, Oli recommended Tom Eaton in, Jadon Sancho, Rafael Varane and he re-signed Cristiano Ronaldo after 12 years. Um, Oli's also got rid of a lot of players since he's come in, which he knew he had to do. You know, he's got rid of players permanently, you know, he's loaned quite a few players out. Uh, the players he's got rid of permanently, obviously Solskjaer offloaded Daniel James in this year's summer transfer window. He was the only player we sold in the summer transfer window which was disappointing from a Man United perspective, because I expect us to sell more players in this year's summer transfer window. Uh, Solskjaer also released Sergio Romero and Joe Pereira. Um, Oli also offloaded Fossa Mensa, Marcus Rojo and Odi Nigalo back in January. Oli's also offloaded uh, Ashley Young, Valencia and Smalling. That trio were long-serving players at the club. Oli also offloaded Damian. Also offloaded Fellaini. He left back in January 2019. I think he was the first player to leave under Oli. Uh, we also offloaded Angel Gomez. Yeah, Herrera. Offloaded Sanchez and Solskjaer offloaded Lukaku. So they're a lot of the players he's got rid of permanently. Uh, loaned a few players out in this year's summer transfer window. Obviously we loaned Brandon Williams out, loaned Ethan Laird out, loaned Andres Pereira out. Loaned Axel Tuanzebi out, loaned Tahith Chon out and loaned Facundo Pellistri out. You can see that progress has been made under Solskjaer as well. Um, Ole has got us to semi-finals. Got us to three semi-finals in his first full season. He got us to the EFL Cup semi-final last season. He got us to the Europa League final last season. Obviously we lost the final which was disappointing but that was... Solskjaer's first major final as Man United manager. So there you go. And Oli got us a third place finish in his first full season, and he got us a second place finish last season. So obviously, this season, Solskjaer's looking to build on what he produced in his first full season and his second full season. And we have extended a lot of players' contracts under Oli as well. Uh, quite a few weeks ago, Solskjaer did mention that he wants new contracts with five players. That's Bruno Fernandes, Paul Pogba, Marcus Rashford, Luke Shaw and Harry Maguire. And Solskjaer has also beaten quite a few big name managers as Man United manager, which is also another positive. You know, Oli's beaten Bielsa a few times, he's overcome Pep Guardiola a few times, he's... Obviously beaten Carlo Ancelotti a few times, beating Jurgen Klopp in the FA Cup, but he's not yet beaten Klopp in the league. Beaten Jose Mourinho. Oli's also beaten Tuchel. And he's also beaten Julian Nagelsmann. So these are the things I've got to credit Oli for. Oli got appointed in as Man United manager in December 2018 to replace Mourinho. Oli has been permanent Manchester United manager since March 2019. 
The reason we're giving the job permanently was reflecting now well he did as the interim manager. But whatever happens regarding Solskjaer will always adore him because at the end of the day he's a club legend. He enjoyed 11 years as a player for Man United. He flourished under Sir Alex Ferguson's guidance. I reckon Solskjaer is our best manager since Ferguson. You know, he's our fourth permanent manager since Ferguson. Because since Ferguson, we've sacked three managers. And we're not even really known as a sacking football club because we haven't really got the structure to keep sacking managers. But the managers we sacked, obviously, we sacked David Moyes after 10 months. Moyes is the worst manager we've ever had. We finished seventh under the David Moyes era. We sacked Louis van Gaal after two years, despite him winning the FA Cup. And we sacked Jose Mourinho after two and a half years. And Mourinho won the Europa League, the League Cup and the Community Shield in his first season. Mourinho also got us a second place finish in his first season. So you can say Mourinho did enjoy one good season at Man United. But the reasons it didn't work out under Mourinho is because he had bad disputes with the board, bad disputes with the top players. And in general, the board just weren't getting the players in that Mourinho wanted because at the time Mourinho made it clear to our board that he wanted a centre-half and obviously Mourinho didn't get that centre-half that he wanted. We must have brought a good 44-45 players in now since Ferguson retired. Obviously, you know, when we had Moyes, Moyes obviously brought Juan Mata in, he brought Fellaini in. Juan Mata's still here. Uh, Louis van Gaal, he must have brought a good 15, 16 players in. He brought players like Depay in, Angel Di Maria. He brought Schneidlin in, he brought Schweinsteiger in. Uh, van Gaal also brought Herrera in. I think he brought Fal Callin as well. Uh, van Gaal also brought Marcel in. He brought Luke Shaw in. I think he also brought Damien in as well. He brought Valdez in, did Louis van Gaal. So yeah, there are a lot of the players that Louis van Gaal brought in to Man United. Probably haven't mentioned them all. Jose Mourinho, he recommended 11 players into the club. Still quite a few players here from the Jose Mourinho era. Jose Mourinho obviously brought Lukaku in. Lukaku's not here now though. Jose Mourinho brought Sanchez in. You know, Sanchez is not here now. Mourinho also brought Matic in. He brought Pogba in. He brought Fred in. Mourinho. He brought Lindelof in. He brought Bailly in. He brought Diego Delot in. Mourinho brought Lee Grant in. Um, who else did he bring in now? Uh, have I mentioned them all? Yeah, I think that's about it. So there you go. So Solskjaer is inheriting players that other managers brought in. I think our squad is worth 
around 805 million. It's like the third most expensive squad in world football behind PSG and Man City. <laughs> Now, Man United are going to sell players next year. We need to, because there's still certain players at the club that are not good enough to represent the club. Well, the other week, it said Solskjaer is ready to sell up to seven players in January. That includes Anthony Martial and Donny van der Beek. Uh, Martial is finished at Manchester United. Martial did play against West Ham in the Cowbell Cup but he struggled to make an impact a couple of chances fell for him but his finishing was poor and for the vast majority of the game he looked isolated now he said the other week that Man United are ready to sell Martial in January and Man United will accept offers of 40 million for Martial Barcelona are considering making a move for him next year Martial has been a long term target for Tottenham. <laughs> uh, Atletico Madrid were linked with Martial last summer. Don't forget Martial rejected the chance to join Leon on loan on deadline day. But before the start of the season it said Solskjaer refuses to sell Anthony Martial. Because he remains part of his plans. Martial has been at Manchester United for six years. He's got three years left on his contract. Martial has scored 78 goals in 264 games in all competitions. We got Martial in a deal worth 58 million from Monaco back in 2015. Last season, Martial was out with an injury for a while. Solskjaer was the one that gave Martial that number nine shirt. Uh, Donny van der Beek has to go because he's not getting enough game time at Man United. Van der Beek played no part against Villa. Um, he did play against West Ham in the Cowbell Cup. He played the full 90 minutes against West Ham in the Cup and what a performance he produced. Um, he started against Young Boys in the Champions League but Solskjaer taking him off at half time. And I really criticised him for that because in the first half of that game, Donny van der Beek was our best player. But Donny van der Beek has to start in the Premier League. Uh, don't forget Solskjaer rejected Donny van der Beek's exit because it said Everton were close to signing him on loan. Many clubs have been in for van der Beek. Don Hutchinson said not so long ago that he told Donny van der Beek he must leave Man United to save his career and Paul Lins came out and said that Donny van der Beek has absolutely no chance of staying at Man United. Um, in recent weeks van der Beek's agent had been doing a lot of talking and a few weeks ago now, Van der Beek told Solskjaer his best position. Van der Beek reckons he will be best served operating as a number six or as a number eight. This season is Van der Beek's second full season at Man United. Last season, Van der Beek made 36 appearances in all competitions, but most of them appearances came from the bench. We got Van der Beek in a deal worth 40 million for my acts, with add ons included. He's got a contract with Man United till 2025, and he's versatile. He can play in three different roles. Lingard, you know, we could be offloading him in January. Lingard didn't play no part against Aston Villa, but he played against West Ham in the Cowboy Cup. Put an OK performance out, had some good chances. Should have won a penalty because he got brought down by Mark Noble. <coughs> but he was greedy on the ball. Lingard obviously came off the bench and scored the winning goal against West Ham in the league. And what a goal it was as well. Lingard did get a good reception from the West Ham fans because obviously last season Lingard enjoyed a four-month loan spell with West Ham and he made an impact. 
Well, prior to that game against West Ham in the league, Solskjaer says that Lingard will be a Man United player next season because he said he's red through and through. I think we're looking to extend his contract. It said Lingard's current contract at Man United expires next year. Well, a few weeks ago, Lingard rejected a new Man United contract offer over playing time concerns despite him being in the last year of his deal. Lingard has been part of the club for a long time. But earlier on this season, Solskjaer did confirm that Lingard remains part of his plans. I think there's a chance we'll offload the lot in January. The lot is our backup right back to Amwan Basaka. Uh, the lot played against West Ham in the Carabao Cup last week and he put a very good performance out to his credit. Uh, last season, the lot had a loan spell with AC Milan and I've got to give him credit because he did quite well. But with him being on loan at Milan last season, he gained some experience. Um. There's a good chance the lot will play against Villarreal on Wednesday in the Champions League. Pesaka can't play because he's suspended. Uh, we got the lot three years ago from Porto. We paid 19 million for him. The lot's got a contract with Man United till 2023. Uh, there's a good chance we're going to offload Jones as well in January. You know, Jones doesn't get in our 11, and Jones has always been inconsistent. This season is Phil Jones' 11th season at Man United. So he's been a long-serving player. He's the only outfield player that's still with us from the Ferguson era. Jones is now back from injury, obviously. Came back earlier on this season. Jones was part of the squad for the game against West Ham in the Cup, but didn't play any part. Alex Tellez, you know, could be offloading him in January. It'd be the right decision to offload Tellez because Tellez doesn't really get in our team, does he? Tellez did play against West Ham in the Cowbell Cup. And there's a chance we'll offload Eric Bailly in January, but I don't want us to because Bailly is a good centre-half. He's going to find it hard to get in the team now, obviously, with the arrival of Varane in the summer transfer window. But he's always there as a backup, so if Varane or Maguire get injured, then Bailly is the plan B. So, there you go. On my next video, I will be giving you a preview for the Man United Villarreal game. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.